Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. This is my final video going in depth on the Tesla Q2 earnings call. The next question where we're up to is about semiconductors, particularly in regards to the shortages of chips that's been raised in the past. On top of that, also mentioning that others are making their own chips in-house. I assume he's referring to BYD who actually do make their own semiconductors in-house. Obviously not all the semiconductors that go into the car, probably the most basic ones. Autos actually do use relatively basic chips. If I recall, I think it's to do with the microcontrollers they're using. Put it this way, the auto industry is not leading the way in technology or hardware. In fact, legacy are in trouble, as no decent semiconductor company wants to even make their basic chips anymore. Why would TSMC want to make a chip for $4 and sell it for $6, when they can make chips for $8 and sell them for $20, or something around that ballpark? TSMC are down to the atomic level in chip manufacturing. Is that not absolutely amazing? Do you realize how long it takes to get to that level? It's possibly one of the biggest barriers to entry of any other business. As a result, legacy autos are having to get their chips made in places like Malaysia because the real chip makers don't want them as customers. They aren't even that big a consumer in the industry. Therefore, it's not necessary for Tesla to get into the chip manufacturing business. There are companies already much better than Tesla can ever be. Not everything needs to be vertically integrated. If it reduces a significant amount of cost, then it's worth it. If it reduces bottlenecks, then it's worth it. Or if you need components completely customized that no one else can do, then it's worth it. And Tesla doesn't need to acquire companies like Hydra either that make all the castings. It's highly possible that if Hydra were not able to do what Tesla wanted, then Tesla may have made their own gigacasting machines. But if they don't have to, then there are more important matters to attend to to the growth of the company. And now it looks like we are facing such a potential bottleneck towards the end of this decade with lithium processing. But Tesla see this problem 10 years away and are looking at taking action now. It looks like lithium will remain as the mineral for the ionization process, refining it into lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate. However, LFP doesn't require as high a grade lithium. Apparently it can still use technical grade lithium, which is an easier, faster, lower cost refining process, at least for now. Although that might change if we improve energy density in LFP, but might be fine for stationary storage still, if it means perhaps you can have twice as many cells due to an easier refining process. Anyway, so Elon has asked if there are any internal efforts to improve supply chain with the likes of semiconductors and microcontrollers. Elon just says they don't intend to make chips themselves and don't see the need to. Some companies can just make things faster, better and lower cost than even if you did it yourself. Elon says that instead, they're working very closely with their suppliers. He even says that he just got off a call from one of their major suppliers. The suppliers said that they are going to make major investments in some of the critical chips and components that they need in the car. You see, this is still part of Tesla's economies of scale, working for them in other ways. They're going to be such a big customer and such a great, solid, reliable customer for many, many years to come that the suppliers want to do what they can to please Tesla. They understand Tesla has a long, long way to go in growth and there will be a lot of business to come. Therefore, Tesla's economies of scale in the sense is just their mass or potential mass that make suppliers motivated to help them grow as they will get so much future business through Tesla. Therefore, they're willing to spend possibly billions in setting up new fabs specifically for Tesla. At a guess, Tesla are working with said suppliers and actually creating more customized components for a Tesla as Tesla in reality only really makes one car, the economies of scale of that also kick in, as this one car will sell so many units, probably over 5 million a year, then these suppliers can work on making specialized parts for that car that works better with all the other internals, as they'll be selling 5 million units of them a year or so, compared to just making generic parts that will be able to work for the majority of cars in a one size fits all solution. And this would likely be prevalent in all third parties that supply components to Tesla. And of course, this is only going to expand. Remember, Tesla hasn't even produced a million cars in a whole calendar year yet. Tesla's still tiny. Eventually it will become a juggernaut. And a lot of these suppliers will set up customized fabs just for Tesla, or even end up only supplying Tesla for their specific tailored requirements. I keep saying, we have barely seen Tesla's economies of scale kick in yet. 
In fact, Drew even says that Tesla already have a lot of custom silicon in the vehicle already, and some custom microcontrollers, battery management, and power electronics. Wow, what is up with this earnings call? Did someone spike their waters with sodium pentothal, or some sort of truth serum, making them spill all the beans? Are these the beans that Elon said he didn't want to spill at Cyber Texas? Yet there was no big neon sign announcing the beans are being spilt. You are just given it all at once without a second to digest it or put it together before an equally important nugget of information is handed to you again and you forget the last one. All right, so good to know Tesla already have custom chips, microcontrollers and other various components that are made entirely for their vehicles from their third party suppliers. And why is that? Well, Drew tells us that too. He says he tries to go after where there is a technical advantage. A technical advantage, of course. I'm guessing some of that advantage is there to improve range efficiency. Do you think Ford have their staff talking to their suppliers to make custom components that will improve the battery efficiency to get more range? I don't think so. I think this is likely a really tough additional barrier to trying to compete with Tesla on range. It's not just Tesla trying to tell their suppliers what they want either. They're working together in trying to work out what is best for Tesla too. They all have tremendous expertise and experience and are pooling all their resources together. It doesn't stop there either. Tesla even talk about their suppliers or supply chain advantage and in how they can adapt so quickly. They work with engineers from their suppliers to adapt and find solutions if there are supply issues. Whether it be alternative chips or changing the entire structure of the stack to make it work. And they think that's an advantage Tesla has that many other OEMs simply cannot do, which is absolutely amazing. What a company to be able to invest in that will always continue to go above and beyond in order to achieve just about the impossible. Elon then adds in that Tesla is as much a software company as it is a hardware company. Now look at Ford. Would you think of that as a software company in any capacity? I have no idea how on earth any legacy OEMs managed to create such dreadful user interfaces. I could certainly do a better job all by myself. It must take a real effort to get it that bad. However, Tesla, well, Tesla are making the most advanced software the world has ever seen with FSD. Therefore, having to rewrite some software in order to function with alternative chips is totally within Tesla's wheelhouse and just another advantage. This is what we witnessed when we saw all those chip shortages last year and Tesla rectifying it as fast as they could by rewriting software and changing the microcontrollers. Elon is saying therefore that one of the ways they have been able to address supply chain issues on the chip front is by rewriting the software, but also in some cases, even to achieve dual use of a single chip, which is even better. And when Tesla gets lemons, they sure know how to make lemonade. As Elon says, that chip shortages ended up forcing Tesla to reduce the number of chips in the car. This is also the path they intend to continue to head, integrate more functionality into fewer chips, as that's the way it's going in laptops and phones. The consensus between all of them is that all the supply chain issues have been a wake up call and they, Tesla, are doing whatever they can to achieve more functionality with fewer components. Obviously, the fewer components you do require, the fewer supply chain issues there can actually be, especially with some of the constrained modules that they faced in the last six months. And that is the end of the earnings call. After listening to all of that, however many times it might have taken me, I feel like I have a good grasp on the intended future of this company and the rate we should expect it to grow. Firstly, I need to make a new valuation for the end of year target run rate. But after that, I'm really gonna put a lot more work onto this 2030 price target. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.